Today we're picking up where we left off. So this will be part two of forging the cross beam hammer. I'm trying to find out if I can build the tooling and to see if the upsetter, this is the machine I have, has enough ability or power to make these cross beam hammers. Oh, fill in that outro. <laughs> Just film the outro. You'll, you'll get it at the end. Let's get to it. I think the upsetter is gonna work pretty good. The issue is I'm having troubles with the eye drawn out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the upsetter to create the cross beam first, and then I'm gonna try punching the eye. See if that works. And you can tell by my verbal communication, I really got that eye perfectly centered on the hammer. It really is the best way to start the day by getting everything perfect. Once I come out of the upsetter, I have to deal with something that's called suck down. That's kind of where when the punch makes the hole or the eye of the hammer, the material rolls in. It's not a desirable thing. And so I'm at the power hammer trying to take that out. After I've got that dealt with, I'm over to the fly press using my final drift to push that in to try to get that eye exactly how I want it. After that, it's back to the power hammer to just gently massage it to try to get it just how I want it. This is kind of going a little interesting, so back to the upsetter to see if that can help me out a little bit. So what's happened is, is uh, it didn't actually really work out that great doing the cross pin first and then the eye. It just, I lost too much dimension. And so I think I'm gonna have to go back to the original way of putting the eye in first and then using the upsetter to create the cross pin. 50 cal center punches are back in stock if you want one. I got one to send to you. Head over to my website, take a look. And uh, if you wanna know more about this piece, I will put a video card right there for you to check it out. We're just gonna run this one in a linear process, try to tune up a little bit as we go and just see what the final result is, reevaluate, go from there. If that comes across like it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, you wouldn't be wrong. You know what they say, if in doubt, do the exact same thing that didn't work again and see if it works better. So this is with the eye in it. I like the way it's looking. I tried an oval eye, and now we're going into the upsetter and see what happens to it all. I've been on the fence about whether or not the upsetter is gonna be able to fully forge the cross beam. After this, I have no doubt in my mind, this is amazing. Just a quick tap back into the power hammer to clean up the chub on that cross beam. And let's see what we got here. And would you guess it? Not happy with it. Let's do another one. See how that looks. It's actually looking pretty good. The only thing I don't like is that the eye is still not quite right. You can see this side here is drawn out a little bit too much. I'm gonna make a stop for the depth here from the front. I guess I could do it. No, I have to do it from the front. Yeah, so we're gonna do it from the front. I'm gonna start on that. At this point in the video, I'd really like you to uh, pay attention to the next sequence because this is gonna be the most sophisticated forging and work that you'll ever see, probably. Here's my extremely sophisticated spring stop. So the thought is the block comes up here Hits that, and then when I hit the upsetter and the material squishers, it will just, just flex. I think it's gonna be good enough. If it's not, we'll go from there. What I'm gonna need to do is just put some kind of handle on it. I think that's what I'm gonna do so that I can just pry it open what I gotta come back into it after the initial squish. On to the next thing. Here's a fun one for ya. 
My punch broke off. And now it's all stuck in there. And how you fix most problems in the blacksmith shop? Hit it. Took the opportunity to just clean up the punch a little bit and tune it in. Let's weld it back on and get back to business. What I found works really pretty good with S7 tool steel is that I use uh, the TIG welder to weld it to the plate. That helps sort of uh, dilute the S7 into the mild steel, which is the plate that's on the bottom. And then I also do a massive preheat. I didn't show that and all of that. Uh, it usually works pretty good to hold the punch on and it doesn't break again. Unfortunately, this punch is made out of H13 and that sequence I just described, it doesn't work at all. I got a two for none. My tongs, they just gave it up. Busted there. And at the exact same time, well, not almost at the same time. The punch broke. This is the first time after rewelding it. Like it literally just broke. Ho, 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 ho. Got schooled. Okay, fine. All right. What I did is just uh, rewelded it, heated it up in the forge, and just left it in there to cool down overnight, annealed it, and we're back in business. After thinking about it some more, I've decided to go with a flat sided eye with rounded ends versus the oval. So here I'm taking a piece of H13 and making it into the final drift. This is where we're at. So this blank here is ran up to the point where I'd like to put the finished drift in, the very final master drift, which is this. This is H13 and it's exactly what I want to have the eye be at the end. So we're gonna push this through and see how that looks. And then if it's not a good fit, we will change the other tooling to match this. Closest one yet. Really smoking close. Very exciting. Let's uh, cool it off and we can take a closer look at this one. Oh no! Three point two one. Okay. I should go grind it and see how much we lose. Okay, hang on a second. I'll be back. Just rough ground. Let's see where we're at here. Oh, sweet, 3.048, so we are right, right there at three pounds. Cool. Still wanna, yeah, a couple of little things I still wanna work on. Not happy with the eye quite yet, but overall, very interesting. I'm just gonna uh, play with this here and see where the balancing point is. I can and we're really really close this is center really close very 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 close I want to come in and put a bevel on this corner I think it'll refine it a little bit it'll look sweet so I got to make a tool for that in the upsetter we're going for all in on this one because you can see that once everything's dialed in it's just gonna be smooth as silk gave myself this much time and we're at the end of it, so we're gonna have to pick it up at another point. Disappointing, but it's gotta be perfect. I really want this. So the only thing left to do is we gotta do the pull-up integration. And you're like, what? I'll explain. This is how it's gonna work. I'm here at the old swing set. And for every pull-up I can do, I'll tell you a point about Squarespace. And Squarespace right now is thinking, Oh, Tim, I hope you can do 40 pull-ups. Well, so Squarespace, the one-stop shop for all your online needs. That wasn't one of my points. 
Oh yeah, great templates for anything you need to do. Oh, it's only two. Oh shoot. Oh. <gasps> Uh, online store. Anything you need to sell, they have all the tools to make that happen. Ooh, domain name. You can get it right there. Ooh, point of sale. Connect your Square Reader to your Squarespace app. Make that sale count. Oh, and one more. Oh, do it, Tim. Ah, I can't do it. Ah, that's it. That's all I got. Head over to squarespace.com slash timd. 10% off your first purchase. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. We need a website, it's Squarespace, the one-stop shop. Oh my, Tim, that's an embarrassing. Don't show anybody that.